this evening I'm at a little quiet spot close to home it's actually a nature reserve but I don't think a lot of people come here to be honest so it's good for photographers but yeah um, really lovely habitat and a really good place for insects so that's what I'm here for today I don't think I've been on an evening before just early morning gorgeous light absolutely stunning weather it's been really warm today and now it's just starting to get cooler which is nice so I've come down as it's starting to get cooler I'm hoping I'll be able to get some insects so I basically come to try and do a, a macro shoot I'm particularly hoping to get dragonflies damselflies maybe some roosting butterflies so as the temperature drops everything's going to become a bit less active and eventually insects are going to go to roost in the reeds and the various plants and trees So with any luck, I'll be able to get some shots as they're starting to slow down. So now basically it's just a case of trying to get my eye in. So there was plenty of damselflies as I walked down, a couple of dragonflies as well. Uh, so hopefully they're starting to slow down starting to settle down for the evening so it's just a case of trying to get my eye in and uh, slow down have a really good look so really you've just got to have a good search round there's no easy way around it. You've just got to search, try and find your subject. This is why it's always good to get here early. Give yourself at least half an hour, maybe an hour. Gives you enough time to look around and find your subjects. And hopefully you're not going to waste good light. So for those sharper eyed viewers, you may have noticed that I've suddenly had a shave uh, and changed clothes, which is not something I tend to do halfway through a video. Um, but basically the battery went. Uh, something I'm not great at keeping on top of, charging batteries. So yeah, the battery completely went, couldn't carry on. So I've come back today to finish it off. So the weather's really similar actually. A bit more cloud around, but it's pretty similar weather. Uh, and what's better is, there's less wind around, so it's even better for macro photography. So, where was I? Um, ah, hand holding. So I'd say there's two ways of doing macro photography really. Uh, the first which is hand holding, where you're basically trying to search out the, the insect, trying to creep up on it, and hopefully get close enough to get some decent shots. Uh, the other way is, is really searching for something that's resting early late in the day and finding that subject that's resting and then getting a good opportunity to take your time and basically getting the camera uh, on the tripod and keeping the ISO as low as you can and trying to do everything as well as you can to get the best possible image quality. So when you're shooting handheld it's really a case of compromising on your settings. So what I like to do is pick a mid-range aperture to give me a bit more depth of field in the macro shot uh, pick a fairly high ISO and that's going to give me a shutter speed of hopefully around 500th of a second which is going to combat camera at shake. I like to use manual focus as much as I can in macro photography. You have more control over it and you can take your time to really get that sharpness, really get the focus where you want it. Some, on some occasions you could probably use the autofocus, servo, tracking in good light. For situations like this, trying to photograph damselflies, uh, the autofocus just won't cope. 
they're so narrow you're trying to focus on such a small area such a narrow area that the autofocus just just won't do it for me so I'll switch to manual and then use my manual focusing technique so when I'm doing the handheld macro shots the way I tend to focus is by actually moving back and forth rather than turning the focus ring so I'll, I'll get the subjects where I want it at the right distance I'll focus and then I'll actually move slightly forward and back and that's how I focus so I'll get it focused and then I can move back or forward and that's basically a way of focusing actually moving yourself rather than adjusting the focusing ring so when you're hand holding there's a few things that you want to do for good technique keep your hand underneath the lens try and stay reasonably relaxed don't grip the camera too firmly then when you find your subject what I do is think about where you're going to put your feet because if you don't think about that you'll end up clattering through the undergrowth and disturbing it so think how close you can reasonably get make a decision where you're going to put your first foot and what I tend to do is use one foot to go forward as a pivot and then from that when I've got my subject in the viewfinder I want to see how close I can get I can literally just pivot forward on that foot or move forward rather So get one foot forward like that and then you can move forward and back as you need to. just found a pair of damselflies resting on the opposite side of one of these stems in the reeds. So what I need to do is be really careful in getting close. Just really need to take my time. There's a really good shot there, those damselflies. But there's this one little stem annoyingly in the way. So, part of my macro kit, a little pair of scissors. I'm going to see if I can cut that away and I should be able to get a clear view of them but I have to do it really slowly and really delicately unfortunately one of the damselflies moved it did actually fly back but it came back in a different position but I did manage to get rid of that one annoying little bit of stem um, which allowed me to get a clear shot gorgeous light so the sun's just come through uh, just below the cloud just above the horizon probably got about 20 minutes of light left something like that um, really nice light it's just boosted the light levels a little bit so I should be able to get some faster shutter speeds now or maybe drop the ISO a bit or even drop the aperture but a bit stronger light uh, should give me slightly easier settings to work with Now I sometimes think, even with a macro lens, that I still can't get the softness of background that I'd really like. And obviously if I stop down the aperture, it's going to make that even worse. But I don't want to use a wide aperture all the time, because it's not going to give me enough depth of field. You can buy really good macro lenses, which are bigger in focal length, so you can get 150, 180, and they would be absolutely fantastic. And one of the reasons they're so good is that it gives a really good working distance. So it has that macro facility, but it keeps 
a reasonable distance between you and your subject. You don't have to get very close because the closer you have to get, the more likely it is to fly away. But there is one thing that you can try. So here's a little tip for you. To turn your macro lens into a super macro lens, you can add an extender on it. So this is a Canon, Canon 100mm f2.8 macro, and you can use it with a 1.4 extender. The only problem with that is the extender doesn't fit onto the lens. So how do you do it? Well basically you get an extension tube. So if you fit the extension tube between the extender and the lens it allows you to use it. So you're effectively multiplying the lens but it's, it's still acting as a macro lens but what it does is just soften the backgrounds and I find that I have really good working distance with it. It works really really well. So what you need to make sure you do is do it in this order. The extender <coughs> Extender goes onto the camera body, the 1.4 extender in this case. The extension tube goes onto that, and the lens goes onto the extension tube. So, if you use that combination, it will certainly soften the backgrounds, and I'm really liking the results I'm getting with it. Thanks for watching the video, I appreciate it. Uh, if you really enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Even better, share the video with friends on social media. And if you want to subscribe, you'll be given notifications of new videos. I think it went fairly well today. Uh, glad I came back to finish the shoot for a, a second time. Okay, third time. Um, but it was good. It was good fun, really enjoyed it. Got some quite nice shots actually. Light levels were a bit low, but can't have everything. Beautiful end to the day, really still out there. So next time hopefully I'm gonna make um, another macro video where I'm gonna make it a little bit more, um, a little bit more advanced. Didn't get to do any uh, really slow stuff on a tripod. I didn't manage to find anything where I could set the tripod up, uh, try and get the best quality out of it. But that's how it goes. See you next time. <laughs>